The history of brass instruments contains a wardrobe full of cute, queer, worrisome, deformed and strange experiments, some of which were successful, many of which were not successful. And in this video I'm going to share my choice of five odd brass instruments you've probably never heard of. Number five, the Shedi Phone. This is a Czech made version of a double belled brass instrument, kind of like what you might get if you got a baritone and a euphonium and they were in a car crash together. The idea is that the player can adjust the tonal quality or timbre of the sound uh, that the instrument makes by directing the airflow through a different sized second bell. The shitty phone was produced as a family of instruments with sizes ranging from very small to very large. They have this unique sort of odd droplet sort of shape which differentiates them from other double belled instruments such as double belled euphoniums. Number four, the core omnitonique. Horns of the 1800s and before didn't have any valves and they were little more than long loops of brass tubing through which a player could play a limited set of open notes called the harmonic series. If you wanted to change the set of notes that you could play on your instrument you would have to stop playing, grab extra loops of tubing, shove them into your instrument and then resume playing. Omnitonic horns, or the core omnitonique, were designed to allow the player to change the pitch of their instrument without all of this fluffing around. There were several different approaches to this design, such as this instrument. This instrument has three valves which are conveniently placed miles apart from each other, and you can adjust the pitch by manually twisting each of these valves uh, or by adding some additional tuning slides. A different approach to this problem was to have multiple sets of tubing all attached to the instrument and simply just choose which one you wanted to play in by putting your mouthpiece into a different receiver. Uh, so you would grab a, a horn like this which has eight different lengths of tubing, you would put your mouthpiece into the receiver of the uh, key that you wanted to play in, you would adjust a little sort of junction box where this air goes out of that selected length of tubing and into the main bell section and away you would go. Number three, the Antonio phone. This instrument is seen by some as just little more than a modified version of the sax horn. However, whilst it shares many similar tonal characteristics of the modern sax horn, it did come in its own family of variations, including double belled versions, three valve, four valve, five valve versions, small ones, big ones, the lot. Eventually, the court of public opinion decided that these designs offered no real advantages over the sax horn, and they subsequently faded out of knowledge, mind and history. Number two, the Sudrophone. This instrument looks like it draws its inspiration from the Ophiclide and a sax horn. However, it has one key innovation that differentiates it from both uh, of those previous instruments. There is an extra chamber that is attached to the bell near the mouthpiece receiver which holds this sort of silken membrane. If a player chooses to engage this mechanism it causes the instrument to make a sort of nasally kind of rattle or vibration and the idea of this was that it would imitate the sound of a cello or a reed instrument. There's only one recording I could find of the Sudro phone, and it sounds like pants. If this is a representative of how all of the Sudro phones sounded, then I'm not surprised that it didn't catch on. I mean, who wouldn't want an odd shaped instrument with a mechanism that would allow you to make it sound deeply unpleasant? Before we get to my number one choice, I'm going to share with you a special mention the Harmony Tromp. This instrument is my special mention because it's certainly odd and it's you've probably never heard of it, 
but it's not technically a brass instrument because you don't buzz into the mouthpiece. The player instead blows plain air into the mouthpiece and that air then travels into a chamber of free reeds. The player will press down on one of the buttons arranged as you would find on a piano to select the note, which I guess kind of means that this instrument is the forerunner to the modern melodica. And finally, number one, the Bim Bonny Phono. The Bim Bonny Phono is played vertically and it appears somewhat similar to the Ophiclide. However, whereas the Ophiclide uses the woodwind style of holes and pads to change their pitch, the Bim Bonny Phono has seven rotary valves, some of which are dependent on previous ones. For instance, you could only use the third valve if the second valve was used, you could only use the fifth valve if the second and third are in use, and so forth. The Bim Bonny Phono was pitched in the key of F, and I guess could almost be considered the forerunner to the modern contrabass valve trombone. So that's my choice for five odd brass instruments you've probably never heard of. If I've missed anything that you think I should have included, please let me know down in the comment section below. Thank you for watching.